Welcome to a Culinary School of Fort Worth how-to video. Be sure and check out all our other ones as well as our podcast for information on culinary arts. So what I'm going to talk today about is the mother sauces. There are five mother sauces. I'm also going to mention some mise en place items in, in making those sauces. So mise en place is meaning everything in its place. Part of the mise en place for sauces would be mirepoix, a blend of celery, onion, and carrots. Another thing that we'll be utilizing today, which was already in this, would be an onion pique. And that's where you have an onion, with a bay leaf, and some clove. We're using that in making the bechamel. Again, one of the five mother sauces. So, talking of the five mother sauces, again, these are where sauces, they're the mother sauces because other sauces are made from them. So the first mother sauce will be a espanol. It's used with, it's very rich, so you would, thin it with some brown stock and turn it into a demi-gloss. The next one would be the sauce tomate. It's used in some of the other sauces such as a Creole or a Milanese. In the middle here we have the Hollandaise, another favorite on the brunch, but also throw in some tarragon and shallots and it becomes a Bernays sauce, which is excellent on your steak. Here we have a Velouté, which is a sauce made with roux and a stock. And then this last one here is the bechamel, which is scalded milk with the roux. And that's what we'll be making today. I have my roux started here. Roux is equal parts by weight, and it's important to weigh it, fat and flour. Well, the fat we're using is clarified butter, where there's no uh, water in the butter and none of the milk fat solids are in there, so there won't be any browning or scalding. Then you can cook roux to different levels. There's just a light roux where you mix the butter and flour together until it's uh, cooked through. Cook it a little longer for a blonde and then cook it quite a long time to get a really rich, we call it dark roux. Used it a lot in Cajun cuisine. Now, I have a light roux here then, um, that I'm going to warm up and then I have here, this was scalded milk, so it had the onion piquet in there. And what that does is that adds flavor to that. When you're making all your sauces, you don't season until the end. If I season beforehand and then it's not the right consistency and I have to reduce it, which is one way of thickening sauces, then it will, the flavor will be too strong. So we'll always season at the end. So I have my roux here, again, equal parts by weight fat and flour, and you can use any kind of fat. A lot of people like to use bacon fat, or duck fat, beef fat even, to make your roux. And that's one of the thickeners here. So then I will be adding the milk there to the roux. You have to be very careful adding that as it, you can hear it sizzling. It begins to boil up, and if it boils up over and gets on to you, it was very sticky. So first it comes in as I add that, liquid to it, it ends up like with a mashed potato consistency, then cooks down to almost like peanut butter. Again, I'll add some more of the liquid there. Again, this milk was scalded previously with the onion piquet in there to infuse some nice flavor. You want to work out any lumps, and then once you've got that begin to mix together, then you will add the rest of the, all the liquid in there. The consistency of sauces is important. You want sauces to coat whatever they're on, and you want enough sauce for every bite. So consistency ranges from the different types of sauce. So a demi-gloss is not going to be as thick as a bechamel. Bechamel sounds like a fancy term, but you may have made it if you've ever made a country gravy. Again, it's milk and roux. Uh, so from here, what we like to do in this class is maybe throw in some cheese and some cooked macaroni shells, and you have a classic macaroni and cheese or throw in some summer sausage and a Shiner Bach with some cheddar and it turns into a, a beer cheese soup. So a lot you can do with the bechamel as a base for sauces. And again, the consistency we're looking for, we want to work out all the lumps of the flour until it's nice and smooth and continue to cook that down. And again, what we're gonna look for is in sauces is nappe, where it coats the back of the ladle or the spoon, what you're working it in, doesn't have any lumps, so I still need to work this out. You can also use a whisk to work it out. I like to use my spatula or even a wooden spoon and just 
compress the lumps down there. Controlling the heat is very important too on that. So in order to get the brew to work, it needs to come to a boil first to begin to get those starches to gelatinize and thicken and then a slow simmer to get the right texture. And then once I have this all mixed together smooth, then it'll season. One of the seasonings we'll use in this is nutmeg. Nutmeg is one of those seasonings where it just takes a little bit. You don't want to taste it, you just want to miss it. It's one of those that if you use too much of it, it will be overpowering. And so it's important to do that. If, as you're doing this and you can't get all the lumps worked out, you can always pass it through a chinois uh, or some cheesecloth to get the consistency that you've worked out. And again, from here, this can be used for your pepper gravy, for your chicken fried steak, mac and cheese, beer cheese soup, lots of variety you can go from there. Thank you for joining us with the Culinary School How-To videos.